P Diamond here with the Troy built TB30R riding lawnmower and we are right at 200 hours and the issue that I have today is this if you watch the front wheels while I turn the steering wheel see how much slop there is before the wheels start to turn so that's what we're going to be looking at the first step is to remove the screw that holds the top of the cowling on I'm going to pull that off with that just pulled up out of the way now reveals these two fasteners here that are the plastic button, same kind of stuff you have on your car body panels. So just going to put a screwdriver in under the edge of that and pop the button out and pull those out. The easiest way to get these out is you remove the center piece first and then that leaves behind that piece and you just pull that out. If you try to pull this out You'll never get it out because the way that this is designed it flares those two side pieces once the the center peg is in and it won't come out so pull the center out first and then that gives you the ability to lift up and out of the way the bottom part of the cowling so here's what we've got so far um and it may not actually be necessary to remove this cowling it just depends on your situation but i found that this bolt here that joins the top part of the steering column to the lower part of the steering column um, that bolt was loose um, and so I also took the steering wheel off that's just a 9 16 nut a bolt that goes through the middle of the steering steering wheel um, I just wanted to see where the play was because there was some slop in the shaft um, even before it went down through the bottom of the deck to the actual steering mechanism so I tightened that up like I said that may not be necessary um, to get to the piece that we want to really look at which is the next step okay so I have the front of the mower lifted off the ground using a jack stand now I have the bagger assembly so that's what this um, heavy counterbalance weight is you may not have that on yours if you don't have the bagger attachment but I have that on mine then up under here is the steering mechanism so this nut here is on the bottom of the steering column and above that there's a cogged gear and that gear runs along this um, tooth um, blade almost so it's, it's like a, a very low tech rack and pinion steering column system um, the flaw of the design of course is the fact that it's open and even though you might grease it um, grit and sand is going to get in here and so what I have bought is a new gear cog that's going to go up behind this nut on here and hopefully my thought was that's probably the, the most wearing part if not then um, this piece here is just another ten dollars so it may be that both of them are worn and that's what's given me the slop I may be able to get away with just changing that gear but we'll see so on to that part next okay so this nut comes off and it is a half inch nut and then there's two nuts on the side of this uh, retaining bracket and they are 7 16 so once you've got that loosened up you can drop this whole thing down and that reveals the gear here that we're going to re be replacing and that just slides off 
And it was a little finagling. You gotta get it out. So I'm gonna work on that and get that out and show you what's going on there. Well, it's hard to tell, but this is the new gear and this is the old one. You can definitely see some wear on the teeth, but it's not excessive. And if you put them together, um, there seems to be minimal wear of any concern. So I would imagine that this gear is hardened and that the wearing piece is going to be this right here. So I'm going to order one of these as well. Fortunately, I just cut the yard so I can wait a few days for it to come and then we'll get back to this. Um, so all you got to do is just remove the, if it'll focus, there you go, remove the split pin there. This will drop down on both sides and that is this here and then this whole piece will drop out and you'll be able to change that. Shouldn't take too long. But um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and order the other part and we'll come back to this in a couple of days. So actually before I go ahead and order this part, I took it off and inspected it. And what I found was there was a lot of play between the top of this bracket here and the top of the track. So I actually manipulated that in with a hammer and removed some of the slop because that slop was allowing this to move back and forth which meant that that brought in slop between the teeth and the gear and that may have contributed to the slack steering wheel so I don't know, I'm going to put it back together again as is and see if that makes any difference. Okay, so I cleaned this all up and put it back together again. And I put a real light coating of grease uh, between the friction surfaces. Um, we also did the same under the linkage arms here. Just put some under there. Um, these are super easy to pull out, you just lift up and turn. Okay, so that's the uh, hole where the steering column goes down through. And there's a bushing that's got a hex that goes down into that hole there. Then the steering shaft column goes down inside of that. I just took it out to clean it. I'm going to put just a light film of grease in there and then uh, slide the steering column back on. This is the spline that the, uh, the gear nut goes on that runs along that track. So I'm going to put that back together again real quick. So there's a bushing here at the top of the, uh, the cowl bracket and that bushing down there at the bottom. I put a little bit of grease on both of those. Now that bushing that I just showed you, it comes up from below so it doesn't sit down that way it goes up that way so it will just drop out when you pull the steering column out so that's that lubricated again and uh, we're going to get back underneath here and put the rest of it back together okay so when you put this back together again um, I put the gear wheel back on and then you have to put this bracket back on and line up the two bolts on either side and the center one and then your uh, retaining washer and uh, nut go on next okay so that's all back together again tightened up and now we're just going to reattach the I guess thyroid arms whatever you'd call those FYI, while you got it off the ground, if you've got a grease gun, you can grease the front hubs just while you got it up in the air. So the next step is 
take out the jack, um, set it on the ground, then we'll straighten the wheels up, put the cowl and the steering column back on. Okay, so cleaned all that out while I was here, and now we're going to straighten up the tires. Yeah, looks pretty good. Now I'm going to put the cowl and the steering wheel and the uh, the foam bumper pad back on. Okay, lower cowl back on. Just pop those in, and then if you look on the back, they're actually shaped. So you line that up and push those in. See how it's got that shape to it. Okay, that's that done. Then I'm going to put the foam sleeve on and then the top cowl with the one screw goes in through there. So this top cowl, there's little plastic tabs. Then you just have to, if you see the shape of it here on the front, designed so you can kind of put it in there and then rotate the cowl into place if that helps you get that in and out and then just screw that screw back in just snug so that's the rubber bumper sleeve back on the lower and the upper cowl back on done Okay, so I just took it for a test drive, and it's significantly better. Um, there's still a little bit of slop in the steering, but I think that that is either the plate that we didn't replace, or it could just be the design. Um, so it's definitely where the gear wheel intersects with that. Cogged, I um, mean that toothed plate, but either way, it is much better than it was. And like I said, I just took it for a drive, and it feels way better. So at this stage, I'm not going to order that plate. Um, my concern was it was getting worse and worse, and it was going to actually fail mid-season. I didn't want that, um, but I'm not sure the wear on that gear did not seem significant enough to be a contributing factor so I think in my case it was the that retaining bracket by bending that top piece in and tightening up the track I think that was a big part of it and I think the uh, the loose bolt between the upper and the lower part of the steering column I think that was another big part of why I had slop in mine but either way that gear is like nine bucks the plate is ten dollars so it's super easy to replace those parts and um, yeah you could you could easily fix your sloppy steering I've seen people online talking about they've actually had the teeth break off on that plate and they lose steering they have like a dead spot so either way it's super easy to replace um, but it is uh, July in Jacksonville Florida Heat index today is over 100 degrees, so I am going inside, and thanks for watching.